It's new this afternoon. The top prosecutor in the state of New York warns he'll take AIG to court if it does not hand over details about those bonus recipients. He wants to know who got the bonuses, how much, and who they are. State Attorney General Andrew Cuomo also demanding a list of the top bonus recipients at Merrill Lynch. That's the troubled financial firm that handed out $3.6 billion to executives just days before Bank of America took over its operations. Our senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano, is with us here in Studio, uh, eight, stu studio 12H. I, Judge, the State Attorney General of New York wants the names of people who received bonuses properly. He wants to violate the federal statutes that protect the privacy of every wage earner and income producer in the state of New York. The federal statutes are clear. What Mr. Executive at AIG or Ms. Executive at Merrill Lynch earns is between them and their boss and the IRS and nobody else. Think of it. The Attorney General cannot just get whatever document he wants because he has curiosity about the document or because he thinks it will enhance his political career. He must show evidence of a crime before he even acquires the authority to seek the document. I would encourage AIG and Merrill Lynch to resist that subpoena, to appeal it before judges who understand and appreciate the Constitution, and that Andy Cuomo cannot get away with this. Would this be precedent setting? It has happened. It, but it's, 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 uh, it's unconstitutional, period, you're saying. It's not like this is your opinion. It is clear. It is clear that it's unconstitutional, but it has happened in the past. Thomas Dewey, who ran against Harry Truman for president, used it in the 30s. This statute is 100 years old. Rudy Giuliani, who became the mayor of New York and almost the Republican nominee for president, well. used this in the 70s and 80s. Elliot Spitzer, when he was attorney general, before he became governor of New York, used the same statute to sue Richard Grasso, who was the head of the New, York, uh, uh, the New York Stock Exchange. He basically said, I'm the attorney general and I can decide what's right and wrong. And I think it's wrong, Mr. Grasso, that you made that much money. Your employer paid you that? You had a contract for it? And you accepted it, but I think it's wrong. Of course, after he became governor and then had his fall over the prostitute issue, the courts threw the, the, threw the complaint out. The courts will quash these subpoenas. They cannot enforce them. All right. Now to the matter of the taxing of the bonuses for the AIG employees. The, the House has obviously just voted for this in a landslide. I don't want to sound like we're going back to ancient history, but one of the things that the Parliament did in England when it hated somebody politically was to seize their property. When we won the revolution and wrote a constitution. We put clauses in that constitution to prevent the American Congress from ever doing that, from isolating a group of people that it dislikes and punishing them legislatively. And that's exactly what we're watching today. It's not only mob rule at its worst, without debate, without committee hearings, without considering an alternative, but to seize 90 percent of somebody's property because you don't like the way they earned it is the legislature punishing someone. That is prohibited by at least three clauses in the Constitution. Shep, they all took an oath to uphold the Constitution. When they do things like this, it makes me to believe, it leads me to believe, they never even read the Constitution. There's a lot of this going on, Judge. There's a lot of, you come in here two or three days a week and talk about le the legislative branch circumventing the Constitution. Yet they do, and they get away with it, and it just keeps happening and happening. I'm not saying anybody's happy about all these bonuses. I'm sure they're not. But the Constitution exists for a reason. It exists to restrain the government and to assure individual liberty. And the Constitution expressly says the states and the federal government can't interfere with a private contract. It's none of the Fed's concerns how much money these, uh, these people at AIG made. Look, the federal government owns AIG. They should want it to do well. They should encourage people to do business with it so it can earn back the $180 billion the Fed's put in it and pay the American taxpayer back. Instead, these fools in Washington are trashing it, are seizing its assets, are acting like they want to put it out of business. This is what happens when, when, when politicians try and run a business. It ends up like the post office. Largely, these people were given bonuses for the following reason. We have all of these complicated things that have almost brought down the economy of the United States of America. And the people who put those complicated things together are the ones who know how, in theory, to untwine them. 
to, to, to disassemble all of these complicated securities that got us into this mess. That's why they were given retention incentives, bonuses. If you finish this thing and you unwind this for us, we'll pay you the following amount of money. That's what these bonuses were about. And the Congress is not, whether you are for the bonuses or not, couldn't matter less. That's what they were for. There was a contract and it was binding. And now they're stepping on that contract. That it's unconstitutional has not stopped it. It has again. not. Which is why I think these are dangerous times. Because the people in the Congress, and many Republicans voted for this as well, Populist, are the populist correct. Thing to they're, do. they're riding the crest of a wave. And on that wave is written a dangerous three letter word mob. It's mob rule when they can change the laws without any debate, without any thoughtfulness, and without any fidelity to the Constitution. Thank you for watching this for us. You're welcome, Chef. Come back, I hope.